Hey everyone, my name's Erin and I'm one of the Ensemble Outreach Officers. You may have seen our two previous videos about comparative genomics data in Ensemble, looking at both gene-based and region-based resources. So today we're going to be looking at how you can download bulk amounts of data about um, genes within a certain region and which have orthologs across different species using Biomart. So um, let's get started using that. There's uh, no presentation today, just a demo. So we're going to just launch straight into looking at Ensemble.org. Okay, so here we are on Ensemble.org, our main vertebrate site. You can see we have the header at the top here and Biomart is highlighted. So we're just going to click on that to start there directly. Okay, so we come to this display. There are other videos available on Ensemble about how to use Biomart more specifically, which you can find if you just click on this help icon here. And that'll take you to other videos in YouTube. Um, we're just going to start and have a look specifically at uh, comparative genomic data within Ensemble here. So we're going to choose Ensemble genes to begin with. Now, if you want to find um, orthologous genes across the mouse strains, you can do the same process as you can do here, um, just through the mouse strains option. So I'm going to click on this. And then we're going to choose data set. So I'm going to choose human genes here, but note that we you can choose any of the species in Ensemble. Okay. So those are the first two steps in choosing your data set. So you can see that we now have human genes here. The other two options are to provide filters and attributes. So it's necessary to produce filters to narrow down the data set. So if we click on this, you can see that we're presented with a number of options. It may be that you have a list of genes and you want to see if they have orthologs in other species, um, in which case you would expand the gene option. And you can input your external references ID list here. So you can either paste into this box or upload a specific file with a list of IDs in. Please note that if you do do this, you need to make sure that your list of IDs matches the ID format listed here. You can change this, so you can input your stable gene ID, which is starting ENSG, so that's specific to Ensemble. You can supply a list of transcripts, protein stable IDs from Ensemble, but also you can provide gene names or a number of other different types of identifiers. So this is really useful just for comparing and cross-referencing different databases. Um, using IDs as well. So you could in fact use RefSeq IDs or HGNC symbols such as gene names. I'm not going to do this today, instead we're going to look at how you can find um, orthologs within a region. So if I click to minimize this and I'm going to expand the region. So here you can click and specify specific chromosomes or um, patches or haplotypes within genomes or you can supply a list of uh, multiple regions here if you know that you've got certain regions of interest. So I'm going to be looking at specifically chromosome Y today. So if I scroll all the way down and find chromosome Y. So because we're in the genes biomark, what we're looking at now is it's going to identify all of the genes within chromosome Y. I can click count and it's going to tell me exactly how many out of the 64,000 genes that we have available how many are within chromosome Y? We have 518. It's really useful to use the count function, especially if you're actually uploading a list of genes. You may know that you've got 100 genes and you want to check they've all been accepted. If you click the count button, it's going to tell you if they are or not. Note that this might be different for protein IDs because one gene may encode a number of different proteins because of alternative splicing. So I've specified the Y chromosome and you can see that it's appeared in my filters here. Now what I can do is that if I know that I want to find all the genes within the Y chromosome that are present on another species, for example zebrafish, then I can limit the data set using another filter. So within region we have a number of different options, none of which are related to morphology. So if I minimise this, you can see I have all the options listed here, including multiple species comparisons. So if I click here, we have the option to find paralogous human genes, so genes in human that have arised by duplication from the genes that we've selected. But I'm interested in zebrafish, as I said, so if I click on this, you can see that we've got the option to find orthologous genes from all of the species in Ensemble. And if I scroll all the way down, we can find zebrafish right at the bottom. So I'm going to click on this. You may have noticed that my count data has disappeared because I've filtered the data set again, so I've got a new count available. If I click here, we can see out of the 500 or so genes on the Y chromosome, we can see that only 34 of them now have orthologs with zebrafish genes. 
So that's all I'm going to apply as my um, filters. You could filter additionally by selecting a particular type of biotype. So if you only want to find protein coding genes, for example, or a number of other different metrics, which I'll let you explore in your own time. If we click on attributes now, anything I select here is not going to reduce the data set I've already created. We're going to keep 34 genes from now on. The attributes are actually just what's going to appear in the table that I'm going to download eventually. So each of these options here, so gene stable ID and transcript stable ID are selected by default, and those are going to be columns within my output table. We have a number of different radio buttons, and these are mutually exclusive. So if I click on sequences, I can only now download sequence data. Um, I can't also download information about homologs. So each of these contain different information. We're looking at comparative genomics, so obviously I'm interested in homology. The gene stable ID and transcript stable ID are by default selected. So if I expand this gene option, you can see these highlighted here. And these are going to be for the human genes because that's the primary data set I've got. I'm also interested in finding out um, the chromosome locations of these. So I can tick these and you can see these appearing in this left hand panel. And also the gene name as this is more interesting to me than gene stable ID. Now I've filtered my data set by zebrafish genes, but so far I have no data about zebrafish genes here. These are all based on the primary species. If I want to find out the information, I can expand this orthologue section. You can see that you can maximum select six different species to get information about. So I could um, add in information about Algerian mouse orthologues, for example, and five other species. I'm going to scroll right down to the bottom where I will find zebrafish. It's a long list of all of the species in Ensemble. So I'm going to find matching information from zebrafish. So I want to find gene stable ID and gene name, as well as their location. I want to find the last common ancestor of the zebrafish, the homology type, and how similar they are. So these query percentage IDs and target percentage IDs. Now I have a very long list available and it's going to be quite a large table. I'm going to scroll up here. I'm going to minimize this and I'm going to click directly on results. So here we're presented with this table where I have my gene stable and transcript stable IDs from human, the chromosome name of number, in this case Y of course, because we've limited our search to only look for chromosome Y. Genes start and end, and obviously we have multiple results because we have multiple transcripts within human that will align to um, several fish. If we scroll along we can see the zebrafish genome and where they're located. So we can see this first gene while on chromosome Y in human is on chromosome 19 in zebrafish. We have the locations, what the last common ancestor is, what the orthologue type is, and how similar they are. So in this case, it really isn't very similar. So this is quite a small table, and you may notice it's only got two genes in it. And that's because we limit it to 10 rows. So you can actually check whether this information is all very useful for you. I might decide that I only want to look at just um, genes and ignore the transcripts So to simplify my table. So if I click back on attributes. If I just get rid of this transcript to stable ID and click on results again, I now only have gene stable IDs represented and much more condensed table. So if I want to download all of this data, you can expand and have a look at all of the genes that you've got. So you know, I go to 50 because I've only got 34 genes, I should be able to see all of them available here. And I can click on go to download any number of different file types available for this. What's important to note is that I've put zebrafish genes in as a filter. I could have left this out and used the same attributes and that's going to present me with a list of all 500 genes that were present on the human Y chromosome and only populate the rows where the zebrafish had an orthologue. So we would have a list of 500 genes, and many of the rows will be blank because only 34 genes had orthologs at this location. So I can show you this. If we click on filters and turn off this homolog filters, and again, if I count, I've got 518 genes. And if I click results, 
you can see that all of these rows are empty except for the one where there is actually an ortholog. So if you're looking for genes that do have orthologs, then you might want to put the filter in as that's going to make it a lot easier. Okay, and if you want more help from Biomart or find out more data about what it can do, you can find a long list of tutorials and FAQs as well as links to our videos on how to use it. Okay, and I think I'll wrap it up there and I hope you found that useful. And if you've got any questions, please address them to helpdesk at ensemble.org.